What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about conditional statements with Python. Alright guys, in the last video we talked about comparison operators, how to compare two different things. In this video, we're going to take it a step further and look at conditional statements. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last video, like I said, we talked about conditional statements, how to compare two things. In this video, we want to take it a step further and look at conditional statements, and those allow us to make decisions take actions based on the outcome of those comparisons. So if we compare two things, if it's true, we'll do this. If it's false, we'll do that. So super important with programming. You're going to use these just absolutely always fundamental computer programming concept that are very simple to use, but you have to know how to do them. So the conditional statements are if, else, and l if. And you'll almost always use these together, especially these two. And they are just like they sound. If this is true, do this, else, do that, if, else, right? Elif is another one we'll talk about towards the end of this video where we can add a little bit more complex, complexity, complexity, that's the word I'm looking for, into our statement. So let's just start this out. I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to say num equals 5, right? So let's create our if statement. It's just if, and then we use these parentheses. And inside of the parentheses, this is where we use our comparison operators that we learned in the last video. So let's say if num is greater than 10, and then we put a colon, and then we go down to the next line. And you notice I just hit enter on my keyboard, and it indented the next line. This is important. So let me just write print, uh, your number is greater than 10. Right? So like I said, this is important. This, this is a, a indentation but it's basically a tab. If you hit tab on your keyboard, it tabs it over. Or when you hit enter up here after putting in the colon, it automatically puts it in there. But it's very, very important. Don't put in a couple of spaces like that. That's not right. You want to tab over. And tabs are important in Python. Tab, Python is tab sensitive, if that's an actual word. But uh, the tabs are important, especially with uh, statements like this, if else statements. Um, because Python is going to interpret everything that's tabbed in under this line as being a part of this block of code, this if statement, right? And Python tells that uh, Python can tell that the if statement is ended because it's no longer indented. So like for right here, this would go on. Uh, this would no longer be a part of your if statement, all this gibberish, right? Because it's not indented. So very important. So let's just save this and run it. And let's go, boom, nothing happens. Why? Well, let's look at the, the program flow here. So we're saying if num, our num is five. So if five is greater than 10, <clears throat> excuse me, do this. Well, our number is not greater than 10. So it doesn't do that. And there's nothing else in our program. So it just ends, right? So that's the if statement. You'll often use the if with the else statement, like I said. And to use an else statement, we just type in else. Now this this else is connected to this if, like right? You wouldn't just like create an else statement. You would never ever do that. They always go together, if and else. So else, let's go, see I put the colon, if I hit enter, boom, it automatically tabs and you'll notice this line is lined up with this print line, right? It's important, tabs are important. So let's go print, and then let's take out the space. Yeah, you can put a space after your print or not. I, I generally don't. Okay, so your, otherwise your number is not greater than 10. Or your number is less than 10. All right, so let's save this and run it again. And this time it's going to say your number is less than 10, right? So let's look at this flow again. Our number is five. Is num greater than 10? No, five is less than 10. So it just ignores this line and drops right down 
to the else statement and then prints out whatever is in the else statement. Your number is less than 10. If we change this to 50, if we save this and run it, your number is greater than 10 because our number is 50. So we say is 50 greater than 10? Yes, it is. So that's true. This whole thing evaluates to true. And if that's the case, then it just prints out the next line in the block that's indented. So it says your number is greater than 10. And then the whole program stops. It does not continue down and do the else because this is already evaluated to true. It only drops down if it evaluates to false, right? So that's if and else. Now we can also throw in an L if. And an L if is just another if statement that you could sort of embed inside, right? And you can use this opportunity to ask another question, another comparison. So we can go if num equals to 10, and then we print out your number is 10, right? So let's save this and run it again. Remember our number is 50 this time. And it says your number is greater than 10. Let's look at this flow. So it starts out, it says, is 50 greater than 10? Yes, it is. So it prints this out. Since this evaluates to true, the entire block stops. It doesn't continue anymore, right? So let's change this to five. And let's look at this. So is five greater than 10? No, it's not. So it skips this and it goes down to this. Is five equal to 10? No, it's not. So it skips this and drops down to this. And then it just prints this out. So this should print out your number is less than 10. So we'll save this, run it. Sure enough, your number is less than 10. Finally, if we change this to 10 and save it, is number is 10 greater than 10? Nope. So it skips this, comes down here. Is 10 equal to 10? Yes, it is. So it prints out your number is 10, and then the program stops again. It does not drop down and do the else, right? Unless this evaluates to false, then it would. But in our case, it doesn't. 10 does equal 10. So it just should print out your number is 10. So let's save this, run it one last time here. Your number is 10. Pretty cool. So those are conditional statements. Sometimes they're called conditional statements. Sometimes we just call them if statements or if else statements. And notice the LIF, it's E-L-I-F. In a lot of other programming languages, they, they go else if, right? Or in some of them, else if, Python uses elif, elif. It's a, you know, putting together of else and if, else if, right? Kind of weird. Sometimes I forget that and I put in, I just type in else if and obviously that doesn't work. So just keep that in mind, elif. And the other thing to keep in mind is the comparison operators. This either evaluates to true or false. If it's true, it does a thing. If it's false, it does another thing. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, and those are conditional statements. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.